Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt from Matt's Bookshelf and today we are kicking off with the first episode of Project Pinchon. For those of you who may have missed the announcement video, another new read-along that I'm doing is that I plan on reading every single Thomas Pinchon book in chronological order and then documenting my thoughts in video form on this channel. Much like my Road to Ulysses series with James Joyce, um, I have not read any Pinchon before and I see doing booktube and potentially doing this as a community event as a way for me to um, understand his novels as best as I can on a first viewing, on a first reading. I should say, not viewing, I did not watch this, I read it. But V by Thomas Pinchon is his first book, published in 1963 when Pinchon was 26 years old. Uh, v was met with immediate critical success. It was nominated for National Book Award and also won the William Faulkner Award for uh, Best Debut Novel. And Pinchon at the time, was working at Boeing as a technical writer, and this book and its success launched his writing career, which has spanned many decades, and within the past 100 years, he has written some of the past 100 years' best literature. V takes place over multiple decades and over multiple continents, but mainly the story follows Benny Profane, who is a former sailor, who gets in line with uh, this crew in New York called the Holistic Crew, and also follows a character named Stencil, who is the son of a British diplomat and spy, also named Stencil, who is going through his father's journals and becomes obsessed with this character named V, who is constantly being mentioned in his father's journals. Um, it's an obsession of his father and then becomes an obsession of Stencil himself um, as he tries to locate who this mysterious V is. V as a novel always kept me guessing. Again, this is my first pinch on, so I really didn't know what to expect from him. And first thing that is distinct about his writing is his writing style. It is very much all over the place. It gives you this weird sense of paranoia throughout, but it's also meticulously researched and done from a plot standpoint from a place of passion. This is a very unique book. It feels like the author was passionate about everything that he wrote about. And as someone who loves traveling history, I understand and I can, I, I definitely feel that as well from Pinchon. The, again, this book stem, uh, goes through multiple continents. It goes all around the U.S. as well. It also goes to Italy, um, countries in Africa as well, um, Malta, a bunch of countries in Europe too. And it just really has this ability to shine light on random events that are should be talked about more, at least um, from like a Western historical education standpoint, but are not. And you can tell Pinchon is really passionate about these subjects and did his research as well. And so from that standpoint... I was engrossed by V, as mainly in the flashback sequences, which follow um, Stencil's father. Um, they are also potentially changed by Stencil as he's recording them. So like it's they're not like objective looks at his father's past, more as the way that Stencil, the current Stencil terms it. And for the rest of the for the rest of the video, I'll refer to Stencil Senior as the flashback Stencil and Stencil as one as the main character Stencil in the the quote unquote modern day story. However, V is ultimately an underwhelming experience for me. Again, I loved the flashbacks, but I would say around the halfway point of the novel, the, movie, the book really felt like it ran out of gas to me. And I loved the introductions to Benny Profane and Rachel Hourglass, who were two of the main characters of the group. And uh, Stencil is a decent character, uh, but Stencil Senior is an amazing character. And the Stencil Senior flashbacks, uh, some of which he's a main character of and some of which he's a side character of, always kept me intrigued so I really enjoyed the themes that Pinchon was discussing here. But I have to say that, again, around like the halfway point, reading the book became a chore to me. And then throughout this video, I plan on explaining myself because I know there are going to be a lot of uh, Pinchon uh, fans who are going to be angry at me potentially. I did some research on Reddit. Uh, it seems like V is a little bit of a mixed bag, even among Pinchon fans. But again, for this video, I hopefully uh, reasonably explain how I feel about this novel. So the good first, um, that being the characters, at least in the first half of the novel, Benny Profane and Rachel Owlglass have Rachel Owlglass have fantastic introductions and fantastic character descriptions, especially in the beginning of the book, that really distinguished Pinchon earlier on. Like I can imagine being like a literary critic in 1964, reading this book and being blown away by the way Pinchon is able to establish his characters in very unique ways, both in how they relate to the environment how they're written and how this information is dispensed out over the course of the book. And I'll read two of my favorite excerpts that I think really do a good job of explaining Benny Profane and Rachel Alglass without necessarily, you know, explaining it completely to the readers. 
So this is on page 19, and this uh, excerpt comes around the time where Benny meets Rachel, and they start uh, doing like a motorbike tour around uh, the West Coast, I believe. And at one point, uh, Benny needs to use the bathroom, so I read the scene as followed. By the time the sun was going down, they nearly finished the case between them, for Fane was balefully drunk. He got out of the car, wandered off behind a tree, and pointed west, with some intention of pissing on the sun to put it out for good and all, this being somehow important to him. Inanimate objects could do what they wanted, not what they want because things do not want, only men. But things do what they do, and this is why Profane was pissing at the sun. It went down as if he'd extinguished it after all, and continued an immortal god of the darkened world. And then later on, Rachel Owlglass's description is read as followed around page 47. The party, as if it were inanimate after all, unwound like a clock's mainspring toward the edges of the chocolate room seeking some easing of its own tension, some equilibrium. Near its center, Rachel Owlglass was curled on the pine floor, legs shining pale through black stockings. You felt she'd done a thousand secret things to her eyes. They needed no haze of cigarette smoke to look at you out of sexy and fathomless, but carried their own along with them. New York must have been, for her, a city of smoke. Its street, the courtyard of limbo, its bodies like wraiths, Smoke seemed to be in her voice, in her movements, making her all the more substantial, more there, as if words, glances, small lewdness could only become baffled and brought to rest like smoke in her long hair. Remain there, useless, till she released them, accidentally and unknowingly, with a toss of her head. This is just beautiful and distinct prose that, again, it doesn't it's very detailed, but it's not necessarily spelling out everything to you. So there are probably some objective things that all readers will interpret from these descriptions about Benny and Rachel. But at the same time, you can interpret things for yourself as well. And the way he's able to use the environment as ways to describe the characters too, it's very commendable. And um, I just wanted to read those two excerpts. But there are countless other excerpts as well, especially for character introductions, that are very memorable and Pinchon is, at least at 26, a master at the introduction of a character. And also giving that giving you clues as to the characters that you would hope would be explored later on and keep you engaged and especially early on the care the journeys that the characters go through are really fun and you know kind of quirky in a way uh, benny goes to new york city where he hunts alligators in the sewers for a living uh, working with the whole sick crew and it's so unique and funny and weird and Though it's not, you know, this like grouping, like when you think of like award-winning novels, especially like postmodernists, you think like, you know, like real like intellectual. And this is just kind of fun and weird, but also weirdly intellectual at the same time. Like at one point he's hunting and he thinks like, oh, the founding fathers are probably standing in this very spot. And it's just something really weird and specific to think about that even though it didn't necessarily have a huge impact on the novel, it's just a thing that Pinchon thought of that makes you go, huh, that's kind of interesting and then you move on. But again, it's only something that he would have thought of. And as I said, I think V really peaks with the flashback sequences uh, where you get some of um, Stencil Senior's past and all the various Vs, both women and locations, that he comes across in his travels as a British spy. For example, you have an earlier on section, a whole chapter dedicated to um, a art heist in Florence as um, as the crew, not not the whole sick crew, but uh, Stencil Senior and his group um, attempt to steal the birth of Venus uh, in the Galleria in Florence. And you know, tons of interesting characters that are really well developed in a relatively short period of time. And it has this fun swashbuckling air to it. And then later on at the next flashback sequence, uh, the themes and the tone switches dramatically. It's uh, this character named Mundaugen, who is like a German soldier and engineer in East Africa. Um, occupying this territory in East Africa. I'm not specifically knowledgeable on the actual historical events, other than I think it was, it's like the massacre of the Herreros by German army. And also, Stencil Senior is there as well with other characters and another V character as well. And this is where like the flashback sequences take a dramatic turn where it suddenly becomes tragic. And then a huge theme of the novel is these atrocities that take place in history, mainly in like modern history, at least relative to the time modern history, that are just uh, brushed under the rug for the most part uh, in Western history. So these Germans slaughtered, massacred like these um, African people, and 
I, again, I, I never heard about it. I don't know a lot of people have heard about it, but like, especially from American, maybe in Germany, they do teach about it. But it feels like our like like he's he's exposing something that should not be talked about that that you know, the education system does not want you to know about. And there are some really beautiful excerpts, some beautiful but tragic excerpts as well. Because another theme of the book is like the replacement of humanity with parts. Um, as I read in that Benny Profane chapter, he says, you know, objects don't want what people do want. The irony comes later on that Benny really doesn't want anything, um, even though he's a full-fledged human. And again, like the commodification of people, where there's an excerpt where Mondaugan is traveling with a bunch of, you know, forced slaves through war. And he's describing how these slaves are murdered when they can no longer, when they're physically exhausted and they can't, or they rebel because as property, they're no longer used to their occupiers. So again, they're murdered. Again, it's like the confusion of a tool with a human being. But there's an excerpt in this Mandalkan chapter in Africa where they're at their home base that is not necessarily as brutal. It's definitely not nowhere near as brutal as some of the sections later on, but I think does a really good job of establishing a tone for the camp. Uh, in a way that um, relies more upon Pinchon's writing style than like explicit sh showcasing of brutality. He was in a beer hall, young, old students, workmen, grandfathers, adolescent girls, drank, sang, cried, fondled blindly after same and different sex alike. Someone had set a blaze in the fireplace and was roasting a cat he'd found in the street. The black oak above the fireplace ticked terribly loud in a strange waves of silence that swept regularly over the company. Girls appeared out of the confusion of moving faces, sat on his lap while he squeezed breasts and thighs and tweaked noses. Beer spilled at the far end of the table and swept the table's length in a great foam cascade. The fire that had been roasting the cat spread to a number of tables and had to be doused with some beer, fat and charred black. The cat itself was snatched from the hands of its unfortunate cook and tossed about the room like a football, blistering the hands that passed it on, till it disintegrated among roars of laughter. Smoke hung like winter fog in the beer hall, changing the massed weaving of bodies to more a writhing, perhaps of damned in some underworld. Faces all had the same curious whiteness, concave cheeks, highlighted temples, bone of a starved corpse. They're just under the skin. And so after that brilliant section that's leading to me into the negatives I had with the novel, I think the book really loses steam in its second half. Some of the beautiful excerpts I read about like character development in the earlier sections are kind of absent, I would say, in the second half. And I think the book focuses mainly in the whole sick crew sections too much on melodrama. And I feel like the quirky writing and the quirky storytelling and all of that is more like dressing or icing on what is ultimately a kind of plain and unremarkable cake because the characters you don't care about them at all and they don't do anything <laughs> and it's it, it's written in an interesting way but i feel like it just kind of shrouds the fact that that is this melodrama and i know some people might be saying that's the point and i'm gonna get to that in a second but my retort would be uh, <laughs> waiting for godot does the we're wasting our time thing in like 300 less pages. I don't need 500 pages of or wasting our time. Uh, I just don't want it. It's just not my thing. So if it is your thing, um, I understand. But for me, it got incredibly frustrating because I feel like the book had so much potential in the first like 200 pages or so, excluding the flashback stuff. But, you know, Benny doesn't go anywhere. Stencil Jr. is hardly a character, I would say. I, I felt nothing for him, to be honest. Uh, and the whole sick crew, just a bunch of like, oh, I'm sleeping with you, you're sleeping with this person. Again, again, it's written in, in an interesting way, but ultimately, from like a empathy standpoint, from a malicious standpoint, could not have been more, could not have been less attached. And again, Pinchon recognizes this, mainly in Rachel's desire to have Benny break off from the whole sick crew. Later on in the novel, she eventually is like, yeah, these people are going nowhere, and it's changing us for the worst. And she says this is followed. Once I will say it is all. That crew does not live. It experiences. It does not create. It talks about people who do. Varese, Ionesco, de Kooning, Wittgenstein. I could puke. It satirizes itself and doesn't mean it. The Time magazine takes it seriously and does mean it. It's fun, Benny said. Rachel says. And you are becoming less of a man. 
and so there is acknowledgement, but, and I think Pinchon is criticizing youth culture in the 50s and 60s. In fact, I know that he is. I think when he was after Cornell, he spent some time just hanging around with friends in New York. And so this is probably at least somewhat autobiographical. Uh, maybe not necessarily with Benny Profane as the main character, but the general culture that he was around. But acknowledgement does not necessarily mean, for you, does not necessarily mean that I enjoy it. And I can't say I enjoyed it, because I didn't. In fact, I kind of wanted it to be over, and I really feel like the novel was too long, and there just isn't, like, a narrative um, coherence, cohesiveness, to the flashbacks with the whole sick crew plot. And so V is ultimately, for me, a book that I will say I found very interesting and insightful in many ways and thought-provoking in many ways, but also a book that I dreaded to read, especially as I was getting towards the end of it because I just was not getting a whole lot out of it towards the end. However, this does not make me less motivated just to keep reading Pinchon. As I said in an earlier video I made this year uh, regarding Wolf Hall, uh, the book, the title is, of the video I think is like, should we read books we don't like? I reread Wolf Hall this year. I read it last year as well. Did not like it when I read it last year. Loved it when I read it this year. And so I think especially with someone like Pinchon, who has a very unique taste, I will get more used to his writing as I keep indulging into it. And so... I could see myself rereading V at some point, not necessarily in the immediate future, but at some point I could see myself rereading it. But as for Pinchon's other works, I still am just as motivated now to keep reading as I was before. And so Crying of Lot 489 is next, and I will be reading that next. Uh, as I said in my announcement video, like I, wanna, I won't be reading Pinchon to Pinchon to Pinchon like a David Joyce. Um, I'll take breaks, but I'm going right into Crying Out Lot 49 next, so potentially expect a video. It's a short book, but by the time I, like, actually record a video and have it out, probably, like, mid-October, mid to late October, hopefully, maybe earlier, if I'm exceptionally motivated, but I tend to not be, because <laughs> especially because I have a lot of other things I'm trying to balance right now. And so, Crying Out Lot 49, mid-October, uh, let me know what you think about V, let me know how wrong I am from my hot takes and my thoughts. This is not to say I didn't enjoy the book, I just felt like there was promise set up that I didn't feel like was delivered in a meaningful way. And I feel like some of it was kind of shrouding what is ultimately like really basic plot and um, conflicts that I just couldn't feel like connection with. And I also didn't really find it to be that funny either. I know Pinchon is praised for his humor. I not laugh too much except for the relationship between Mafia and Winsome. So if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about, but their relationship is just, hilarious to me uh other than that i didn't like the songs either there are a lot of songs in this book that i did did not enjoy but yeah so guardians rainbow no not guardians rainbow is not next crying a lot 49 is next guardians rainbow will probably be after that and again tell me what you think about v tell me what you think about the series how i could potentially improve it because i'm all ears for that stuff and i hopefully will see you in the next video thank you and goodbye